Good evening. It is great to start another week with all of you at home, and we begin tonight with new reporting here after the awful news that basketball legend Kobe Bryant was killed in a helicopter crash along with eight others. Tonight, we've learned their stories, too. The news broke on Sunday, the untimely death of the sports legend, who was flying to a youth basketball game with his 13-year-old daughter and seven others. No one survived. We have learned the helicopter was flying in fog that had grounded other helicopters. The sheriff's department was not flying. Tonight, the audio and the moment the helicopter goes off radar. The NTSB and FBI are on the scene tonight, and ABC's chief national affairs correspondent, Tom Yamas, leads us off tonight from California. Tonight, the NTSB, with help from the FBI, combing the scene of that deadly helicopter crash that killed NBA superstar Kobe Bryant, his 13-year-old daughter Gianna, and seven other people. The weather Sunday morning, bad enough that police departments did not fly their own helicopters, but Bryant's took off in heavy fog. How thick was that fog? It was thick. Imagine jumping into a pool filled with milk and opening your eyes. Scott Dalen witnessed the crash. You can hear the helicopter oh, and you, you can can't hear see anything. I can't see anything. I'm hearing the helicopter, all of a sudden the helicopter's immediately above me. I can hear it, but I can't see it. Tonight, we're learning the identity of the pilot, Era Zobayan, who, according to the company that trained him, had been flying for 20 years. According to authorities, Brian's chopper departs Orange County for Thousand Oaks at 9.06 a.m., heading to his daughter's basketball game. At 9.20, the aircraft circles near Burbank in a holding pattern. He's been holding for about 15 minutes. At 9.44, eyewitnesses report hearing a helicopter flying very low. Air traffic controllers inform the pilot they can't detect him on radar. Two Echo X-ray, you're uh, still too low level uh, for uh, flight following at this time. Data shows that seconds prior to impact, the aircraft rapidly accelerated, slamming into a canyon near Calabasas at 9.45 a.m. We're looking for photos of the weather in the area of the crash. Among those killed, John Altobelli, a baseball coach his wife, Carrie, and their 13-year-old daughter, Alyssa. Also on board, Christina Mauser, an assistant basketball coach and mother of three. How do you tell a child their mommy's no longer with us? For years, Bryant regularly commuted by helicopter to avoid L.A. traffic and have more time with his family. I had to figure out a way where I could still train and focus on the craft, but still not compromise family time. Mm. At this time, we ask that you please rise. The shock of the tragedy quickly spreading across the globe. NBA players openly weeping during pregame tributes. They're going to take a 24-second violation in honor of number 24. This guy was like a Pied Piper. People would follow him everywhere just to look at him, to touch him, for him to say hello. For me, this is a god-awful day. And Tom, this is being felt by so many, and the NBA just announcing before we came on the air that the Lakers-Clippers game scheduled for tomorrow night has now been postponed. That's right, David. The league saying they made that decision out of deep respect for the Lakers, which are deeply mourning this tragic loss. And, David, we have to remember this investigation is just getting started along with the recovery effort. It could take days, if not weeks, because of the steep terrain to get up there and figure out what exactly happened. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.